Hey guys, welcome back to uh, D&D with Filthy and Friends. Quick uh, introduction to the players again. Top left there we have Xylo, top right we have uh, Joe and Ribs. Bottom left we have Kevin playing Thaddeus. I guess I should be introducing characters as well, but I'm sure you guys know by now. And bottom right we have Adam from Alt F4 Gaming uh, as the DM. You might notice a different screen setup today. Uh, as we're recording this, unfortunately, Roll20 is down. Hopefully that will be uh, fixed by the time we record the next episode. Uh, but at the moment, we have enough things that we can be doing that we don't need the uh, tabletop display of Roll20 for this. We're going to do uh, an episode uh, without that. So bear with us. Sorry for the lack of visuals. But this way you get some close in of the facial expressions of each of the members as we have this riveting... Uh, episode set up for you guys so a quick recap of last episode i believe we uh returned the uh surviving member of the delegation and the captives from the monastery to uh the nearest town the town was extremely accommodating of that surprisingly so i thought uh, which was great they were looking for housing reuniting families putting people up and otherwise dealing with an influx of essentially refugees which was really cool um on the uh, way back from the monastery we spent a lot of time talking with the dwarven delegate um, we'll be playing some of that for you guys today. Didn't make the cut last time, but I think it's worth rehashing today. Uh, on the way out of town, uh, we uh, started heading back to the rough areas of the Slumber, uh, Slumber Hills, figure out kind of uh, a little bit more of what's where the rest of the delegation might be. And we were jumped by uh, giant flaming hellhounds who did a serious number on the party. Uh, but eventually we managed to survive by killing two of them and one running off. Uh... Tim decided he might chase it down, but last minute chickened out about it, because otherwise it would have been an interesting running <clears> episode <throat> of Tim moving at about 500 foot per round, and this dog running about the same, <laughs> the rest of us kind of being like, what's that in the distance? I would have really enjoyed watching that. But I think today we are going to not pick up there. I think we're going to uh, retcon a little bit of the talking with the Dwarven Delegate, and then perhaps a little bit of the recap of the situation we're in right now, uh, because there's some interesting things that we've kind of been avoiding talking about, but such as why are these three different groups of people attacking us. What do we know about them? What can we put together from that? And also we have uh, today as well, which is going to be kind of exciting. We have the um, we have the letter that Thaddeus sent off to his uh, his order about uh, quite what he wants done with the uh, with the delegation. I think we're going to have Thaddeus, or with, excuse me, with the monastery. I think we're going to have Thaddeus read that for you guys as well. Sorry, that's the plan for this episode. And hopefully we'll be back to uh, the regular tabletop uh, campaign uh, next episode. So, all right, let's get to it. So what do you guys want to do first? Letter, letter to the, uh, letter to oh, the really? order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought we'd start with the, uh, the talking to the dwarf there. Yeah, no, nope, don't imagine... bury the lead. Don't bury the lead. Bring the letter on. Come on. Yeah, that's your preference. Yep. All right, let's do that. This, okay. is, this will be good because this will get everyone in the flavor of what we're doing again. Because it's sometimes nice oh, to warm so up. Kevin's gonna read this, yeah. So okay, so if you guys recall, oh. um, uh, Adam asked that. Kevin, Kevin as Thaddeus, or Thaddeus as Kevin, or whatever the hell we put that in. I don't know, so I'm going to remember this. There's too many names. Thaddeus wanted to make sure that the monastery, which was which was originally a monastery of his god, was uh, well accounted for, uh, brought out of its ruined state, and otherwise reinstated as one of the monasteries of his god. So to do this, he can't, can't doesn't have the time, can't do that alone, etc. Wanted to contact his order to have help with that. So Adam asked that he write a letter, which he did. And I think we're going to have uh, Thaddeus just read that to us in his voice uh, of what's going on for that. So, Great idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam, you ready to, to take notes? Actually, I'll upload this for you later once, uh, once I've got access to that again. Sure. <clears throat> All right. Brethren, many of you know my story, so it is with great import that I share the following. I have located a defiled shrine to Moradin in the abandoned sacred stone monastery in the Sumber Hills, in the Deserin Valley, some small distance from the west shore of the Deserin River. It is my wish that the following things occur. 1. Travel to the Sacred Stone Monastery with enough force to hold and maintain an outpost there indefinitely. Rebuild doors as necessary and establish defenses. Beware of gargoyles. We believe some of the statues are still fiends. There are two levels which are primarily cleansed of evil. However, be not slovenly in your watch. <laughs> Beyond the Steel Gate, 
and heading into the depths is not safe and shall not be penetrated by any but I. An ancient dwarven stronghold lies beneath and foul magics have penetrated. Guard that door well. The northeast corner of both levels is forbidden. Set guards at any magically warded door, but do not seek to enter. There are unsolved mysteries beyond, which should not be disturbed. A tunnel leads westward from the lower level to a valley beyond the redoubt of the monastery. This is both a benefit and a weakness. I trust our dwarven engineers to seal it, such that only those who belong shall pass. And then insert directions to the monastery here. Secondly, contact the priests of Moradin and inform them that our Lord is full of mighty rage at this desecration and that they must establish a new order at the Sacred Stone Monastery with all reasonable haste. This may require the greater conclave at Neverwinter to accomplish. Know that the split in the room of the altar is the work of Moradin himself. His holy ire split asunder the ceiling to end the loathsome infestation of his holy shrine. Do not repair this split, but instead preserve it in some tasteful way that keeps out the elements and yet respects and is reverent of his thunderous wrath. <clears throat> Amazing. Know you all that I consider this sacred stone monastery sacred to my lost order and to myself. This will be handled urgently and carefully, or by the righteous beard of Murad and I will have answers who failed this task. Finally, know each of you that I will protect this place and tithe for its upkeep. I will be the bedrock on which this temple can be rebuilt. Make haste, Muradin's eyes are upon you. I love the idea. I just, yeah, I agree. Awesome. I agree. I like the idea that somewhere there's a small intern to the Order of Moradin, you know, and he's just in charge of mail handling. And he gets this letter in, <laughs> and he's like, it's like little Tim the intern, well, probably wouldn't be Tim, Tim would, Tim's taken, little Jim the intern, who like picks this up, and he's like, oh, what is the mail today? And normally it's like best wishes from like the, you know, like, the, 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 the people of this area who are like, you know, could you send some humanitarian aid there? And like, I just imagine Thaddeus has signed this and like drawn a little picture of himself with like a raised hammer or something to really kind of like <laughs> get people going along with this. That's this, a signature, is it? Yeah, there's some poor little intern is like, what the fuck is this? It's like, higher up, need, a, need an adult. <laughs> I gotta pass that one on them. I really like that. That's, that's super cool. So, I need to pass this to a qualified individual, please. That's right. <laughs> let's, I mean, let's hope they know you. It's just like, let's hope you're a big name in your in your your order, because uh, this is this is a lot of demands. It's, this is going to be easily thrown into the pile like crackpots, right? Like, so <laughs> much, like <laughs> some crazy person's written us another letter into the fire. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, where was it being sent? Um, that was being sent with uh, Roldenthar to Mirabar. Um, with the expectation that they might be able to establish the, um, the at least the initial outpost, and then it would be forwarded on to, um, if not in Mirabar, then the Neverwinter or the nearest biggest conclave, where yep. there's actually priests of um, Morden, and and a large enough. Uh, a large enough group to be able to splinter off a, a handful of priests and go set this up. So um, I, I expected that maybe it was a, a two-stage thing where um, from Mirabar there would be enough dwarves to at least go and hold it and, and secure it and keep it safe and sweep out the the, the flower and the dead bodies. Sure, I, yeah. I do worry a little bit about the uh, sanctity and purity of Thaddeus post-reading that letter, though. There's a lot he didn't tell the Order. No mention of a giant enormous lich in there. You know, so well, he said not to. He, he didn't. He didn't say why not to go through the warded oh, doors, but he did say don't go through the warded doors. I mean, so. it, it, I like I like it because what it implies is the backstory of that implies to some degree that Thaddeus is a high enough level in this order that he has the the decision making capability to do that. That is well within right. his purview of something he can just be like, yeah, I'm not going to mention a, an a, an ancient undead lich here. Like, I'm just not going to tell you that's none of your business. That's for, right. like, you know, your security rating doesn't doesn't allow this. Right. Keep going out, Clarence. Right. <laughs> well, you know, um, the, 
it, it it's the the weighing the good and evil and the and the best circumstance here and having half of my order decimated by by a lich um better to seal them up and figure it out later really i know but i feel like this is <laughs> from Thaddeus, and this is not and this is not criticism i think this is interest this is character movement right this is thaddeus who like initially was like cut and dry there are fiends, we must kill them. You've touched the glaive, I'm going to hammer you to death. You know, like this type of thing. <laughs> and now we're seeing a little bit of nuance. Like Thaddeus is like, oh, there's some there's some things I have to also consider. I like it. I like it a lot. So it's cute. So. All right. So uh, with that. I think it was really in character that it was a numbered list as well. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. And I will. One, I, I will. Love that. <laughs> Here are the things you must do in this order. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like how this place is kind of being set up as almost like a base of operations for the future. I like that. Yeah. All we got to do is, you know, eventually kill everything there. Well, did did you get a chance to look at the, the party notes at all before Roll20 died? I scanned them. What were you referencing particularly? Um, well, I I was saying that we should, uh, like, set this up as a, as a traveler's outpost, too. Uh, you know, a, a rest stop, build a bridge across the, or, or, I mean, a ferry service across kind of right where you come down from the, the monastery and hit the river if you put a ferry service there put a road south along down to barge right it would it, you know this this could actually be a happening place and yeah we could all we have to do we is can make clear it out all of the somber hills of all the evil nasty shit there. You're, yeah, not, exactly. you're not thinking big enough or you can this sell is, it as like a safari no, I like it. I like thing it. this needs to come be a see the hellhounds <laughs> exactly they're just they're just big cats <laughs> <laughs> we could send safari tours. I was thinking, you know, we hire some of the guys with the birds. They could better than a ferry. You could have an air trip across. Like that'd be useful. Oh. Like these, there's a ton of guys here ready to guard this area. They're just currently worshiping like a devil or something, or they're, trying to bring the end of the world. Okay. They're employed by the wrong employer. Yeah. Right. I mean. Right. So if we don't kill all of them, we just kill the people that they work for. Then we could be like, hey, you there's don't a workforce you don't right here. A, right. Your plant's closed okay. down. We've opened a new service right here. Like you know, you, every everybody's making mock, but I think that there's something to it. <laughs> just like just I like, like Jerth, just like Jerth, you know, you you could have hired him on instead of killing him. Yeah, probably a little expanding. bit easier. Yeah, pretty probably a little bit easier with like Flappy Bird cultists than ogres, really. But yeah, I mean that that makes a kind of decent segue. What the fuck is going on in this area? So right. okay, we start off with. We start off with, uh, okay, there's a couple lights in the hills that a few people right. might be missing from time to time, but I'm not real sure, and the delegation is gone. We have been mm -hmm. attacked now by, as you put them, flappy, flappy birds with delicious but poisoned hearts. Hmm. We have been attacked now by enormous dogs who mm -hmm. race across the plains at speeds well above that of a horse and on a well-traveled path between two major fucking towns. Wait, on fire. In you missed broad, the you missed daylight. the on fire part. <laughs> were they on fire? They certainly they certainly were gassy. Like they were on there fire. was large amounts of fire being spread everywhere around them. I, they were directly on fire too. Okay, yeah. And uh, not only that, and then we've also now been attacked by an ogre and whatever these. I mean, the earth guys don't seem to have quite as the same symbolism, but whoever right. this fucking monastery was, a bunch bunch of monks too. So what the fuck is going on? Well, and. and you missed the um, the oh, you strain want... the strangely erected giant wall of doom that uh, that jumped up in our path that that Thaddeus couldn't climb. That that's obviously <laughs> that's that obviously might be an exaggeration. Dirt cold. It might not be the wall of doom so much as it was you know the rating one higher than Thaddeus's climbing rating. <laughs> like you know what I mean? It was it was a hundred feet. Man. That could that's have been a... like a five six, but Thaddeus is only on five fives. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Still, a hundred foot wall of, of like stone thrown up in a path is is no small bit of dirt magic. Yeah, yeah, actually, just that's fair. And, that's fair. And the delegation was wiped out not by the flappy cult, but by the dirt cult. There was um, there was evidence of the shatter spell all over the place out there. Yeah, craters, crater, craters, and shatters. So if it took out whatever that was, twenty armed guards and all that, that that's no small amount of dirt magic. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I guess we haven't seen the, you know, like the bird people. They have their 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 clear like idol. You know, they have the bird thing going on. The dog, the, the fire people have this dog thing going on. We haven't seen the the bird the, the the earth mascot yet. I'm kind of kind of pleased we haven't, but I'm a little bit worried what that might be. 
like earth elementals or something yeah, yeah or like i mean i, guess... I imagine all of them would have their own kind of elemental version though like yeah. not 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 just not just like unless those... hounds, but there would also be like fire elementals somewhere unless if you guys recall when we first met there were those burrowing beetle things oh the young kids no, yeah those are just wildlife beetles. yeah yeah okay so clearly so, something's going on. Yeah, and and obviously we've got a, a a high likelihood of a water cult, and all of us with no snorkels. Um, I'm not sure what the the next encounter is going to look like, um, honestly. Well, so the question is, my my biggest concern. Sure, there's all these four cults, and they're all in the hills, like doing stuff. Um, are they? Are they working together, or are they working? Are they competing? That that would be one piece. I assume competing. And second Maybe. is, they they seem to be specifically knowledgeable about us and targeting us. The flappy guys said, "How dare you? We know who you are. You can't stop us. Fuck all y'all." And the the dogs came across a hundred a hundred like fathoms no fathoms is water leagues in order to like specifically target us um it, it, it's not like it was a train and we were on the tracks and could have stepped out of the way and they would have left it, they they were like so if these things all know about us and are worried about us who the hell are we and why do they care yeah you're right i mean thinking and thinking about i mean what have our actions been it's i mean i guess yes we have now cleared out this this monastery and if we're thinking they're not working together that wouldn't it doesn't explain why the bird people and the and the fire people are so interested especially the fire ones right the dogs so like maybe there is some relationship between the cults and i that we wiped out this this monastery this word of this has spread enough you know over the days of us traveling that now there's some sort of response although that doesn't of course explain the the bird people who are there first I mean, yeah the bird the bird people came before anybody and and were given us grief after, for no reason well not no reason we asked in two locations about the delegation and then had been traveling a couple of days south right to before we encountered them or at least a day south or something like that so in other yep. words there's time for an information to have passed you know it could just be related to the delegation in other words it might not be anything specific to us so basically yeah. you're suggesting that just because of us inquiring about the delegation is why that suddenly they all want to kill us just that alone there's got to be lots of other folks that asked about the delegation well, well maybe not just asked but are actively trying to find them maybe uh, it could be some sort of destiny god thing right this is a magical world with divinities who actually do impactful things one of our party has a herald of Kronos in his head or his glaive or, I mean, he pretends it's just in his life. Um, it's so the south. cults could have, yeah, the cults could have <laughs> been warned that heroes were coming who would, you know, seek to foil their dastardly plans. Yeah, we could I, do I those heroes. Look at it that way too. Like, I mean, this was a, a shroud of murder, and it has now there is now a presumably ranking officer of Muradin's order now wandering around this area, right? No. I'm sure Thaddeus loves to be called the ranking officer. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, you, you mean you probably would enjoy that? Yeah, we're yeah. out of character here discussing though, so we didn't say right, that. Right. Yeah, we're not. We don't need Thaddeus' ego going. <laughs> I out heard there. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so maybe what Tim would just that... be. Tim would just be would... really confused why you didn't understand why everyone was trying to kill you. Like, people know me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> is this new for you? <laughs> Okay, so, so maybe there's like some kind of like prophecy about them like having like maybe there's they have the, within their own organization some kind of prophecy prophecy saying, oh, some adventurers will come and like kill you all. And we just happen to be the closest thing to that prophecy. And so that's why they're trying to do it. Maybe or maybe there is something. I mean, this is this when we question the dwarf a little bit here, that will be very useful. Maybe there is something <laughs> special about I mean, this this delegation was abducted. Mm -hmm. and destroyed and they were bringing this knight's body that we still haven't found right mm -hmm. so maybe there is some magical weapon or you know you're talking prophecies or whatnot some component important enough to all of these organizations that this knight had or his body had 
right who, okay. who, whoever gets it is the victor or something yeah exactly and... like it has a power source or something that they need for their competing ideologies whichever one gets it can do something major with it perhaps mm -hmm. it it seems like if we wipe out the the dirt cult that like the fire guys would say hey here's a hundred gold we appreciate right. your efforts in our behalf they wouldn't right. send the dogs after us they'd be like right. that was phenomenal right. um thanks in, enjoy your stay in Desert Valley. It'll be sad to see you go, but get the fuck out, right? I mean, um, doesn't seem like they would like immediately target us. They'd be yeah. grateful. I was thinking that exact exact same thing. That if that well, they they have to be in some way working together because if they were just like super cutthroat against each other, then they would be really happy that we killed one of their, um, you know, direct competitions. Or or even given us a hand. All all of a sudden we'd be like mapping out in that bottleneck ready, ready to go back in and there would be a, an airdrop from the fire cult that said like but you it know, assumes, here's that assumes that it's too cut and dry right because it could very easily be imagine you know like alignments for example if they are if they all of them are worshiping worshiping roughly evil aligned gods for example and they're therefore they have a closer connection to each other even though they have competing evil aligned gods than they do to some good ordered murden flavored you know paladin wandering around right don't lick me and you don't know I'm more than flavored. Hmm? You got it on your shield, man. It's like, you're like cherry. So. Um, it could also be that it's just escalating, that something's going on and it's getting worse. And this event where we were attacked by dogs could have been unrelated to us. It could just be that now there are flaming dogs on the roads. Right, that their power villages. is growing, you're saying. And that, yeah. yeah, that could be true too. So do we have like, like some kind of worldwide cataclysmic type event that we just happen to be getting or, some remnants or of? localized? I mean, it just could be this yeah. culture reaching some sort of pinnacle of power for them and now can be more dominant and or more assertive mm -hmm. in their like patrolling of the areas or control of this region. Okay, that makes sense. I, I, I would say that this region is a thin spot of some sort between worlds or an elemental something. And that's why they are all here that. That either either they've come here or they were spawned here because this is a a meaningful spot in some way. Yeah, I mean that that would follow from the monastery too. Like if this powerful, if this if your god has a shrine here, there might be a reason that this shrine is here as opposed to somewhere else. And then additionally, if we got below the monastery that was built on an old dwarven fortress, and we now have layers of history all caring about this area, but have potentially because of exactly what you're suggesting, because there's some power or significance to this region yeah. yeah so has there been any specific things indicating that they would be against each other like there was bugbear and earth elemental monks at the ambush site right i think that was what wasn't it some of them were buried and some were not right um i the the only things that were buried were two of the attackers none of the victims were buried right but, but weren't there I, also I, attack, dead attackers not buried? I can't recall. I don't I thought, think so. Okay. I thought I thought it was just the monks were buried and nothing, no, no, nothing, nothing else. One monk, five bugbears. Seems kind of stupid to bury those monks there. Thinking about it in retrospect, I mean their monastery is like two foot away, like you know, like half a right. day's travel. Why would they leave the evidence? Yeah, that is weird. So, um, I I think that there are two things two two relevant pieces and right now as i start talking i only remember one of them sure, um, go with that when when we um when we were searching for the delegation i don't i don't think we had found the attack yet but we were headed south and the flappy guys came out of the sky and said something a lot they, they gave us some some monologue as they attacked that seemed like um we know what you're up to and it's it seemed like their monologue was in some way in relation to the dirt cult not to us um as if in in some ways whatever they were saying was as if we were part of the dirt cult or were were in some way i, I don't know i i don't remember the specifics but as i heard it i i thought they've mistaken us for someone that's actually done something i see so you think they might even that these i mean if if there were rivalries between these cults and one of and the other cults for whatever reason thought that we are a member of earth cult for example 
then everybody would be pissed at us. And that'd be a pretty natural take home from that. Or another takeaway is there could be a powerful good faction, which we are resembling due to our quest, which we haven't actually met and aligned with yet, but which we're being mistaken for. Yeah. Right. The, the other, the other weird piece though, is the split. Once they cross the river, if some of the people went to the, the sacred stone monastery and some of them went to the spire the the question is why did they split and did they split willingly um was there was was, was there an attack there and therefore you know some folks ran off or whatever but it sounds like for some reason they divided up on purpose and are are working together which flies in the face of all our theories i don't think so i think it i I think actually it has a lot of internal consistency not necessarily with our previous theories but with what everything else that's happening here it's interesting to me that there's only one delegation member at the in the basement of the monastery what if these cults are working together to accumulate or find some information maybe they have like you know not particularly trusting alliance but it's a precarious power structure thing and they're like okay we'll split up the members of the delegation if you get information out of it that's on you if we get information out of it it's on us but we're all going to get a piece of the pie that we just captured right you know that's interesting because there were four delegation members and only one was there right i feel like that's a big thing it it almost seems like that they are working together and they might have even worked together to ambush and then they decided okay just Everyone takes one, and that's the reward for working together, kind of a thing. Okay, so I want to, what I want to go with this is twofold. First, I don't want to derail too much, but I think it's very important we get our our our, na- our naming down, our terminology uh, consistent across this. And I've heard some mm-hmm. good ones floated across, but I think we need one for each of these. I like I like the dirt cult. I think that really kind of <laughs> I really like that as it kind of simultaneously insults and de like de escalates any strength they might not have. They're not now the Earth Magic cult. They're right. now the Dirt Nappers or whatever the fuck we call them, right? Right. And, and Flappy Birds is pretty the, the pretty Flappy good. Cult. So we have the Dirt Flappy Cult Bird. and the Flappy Cult. I like I, that. I, I really liked um the the C and it only works as a as an acronym the C O T O cult. Um, is the uh, the hellhound cult? It's uh, crispy on the outside, I think. Because <laughs> uh, the the evidence for that is Thaddeus himself. Well, like, and I, I guess Cole. Right? I don't know. Like, I feel like we could we could figure out something. We need to work on. I say so. We have two. I think two names we agree on, right? We got the flappy cult and the dirt cult. So now we need like what we're gonna what are we gonna call the barbecue cult? What are we gonna call these? There you go, the barbecue. Yeah, cult. the barbecue cult. All right, barbecue Bar- cult. Barbecue and snorkel. Can you eat hellhound, Adam? You can eat anything if you I put enough you sauce on it. Eat whatever you like, Tim. You can certainly put well, it in your Tim, mouth. Would Tim like know anything about? Because <laughs> we may actually barbecue the hellhounds, in which case this has a like a lore reason. This for might being be an initiation well. like process. We might actually be joining by doing that. <laughs> This is the hazing ritual. Oh, yeah, they're going to will... leave fire. I don't know. They're this gonna come back bad. and sample whatever we left and judge us on our barbecuing. So like, we got to do this properly. <laughs> <laughs> so right, can we? Use, okay. So are we guessing? So we we've got a an air aspected one, a dirt, a, a earth aspected one, a fire aspected one. Are we are we assuming that there's a fourth water aspected one? It's extremely likely. It, it would be it would be super weird not for there to be one like what, well, we what, need to be on prepared vacation? when we oh, meet right. them we need to know what we're going to call them ahead of time so that snorkel. I think, snorkel mm, not, I don't that's just off the top of my head hawaiian tropical vacation this all seems i feel real. like that'd be a downside to eating a demon steven the water sports so. cult it's not a demon, it's a fiend. The fiend. No, no, not a water sports cult. We can't do that. What it's about so... just a little bit of the muscle, though? But you do now have superhuman con- uh, what's it called? Constitution, so. Yeah. Sure um, that's right, he's got the amulet constitution. He can fucking eat anything. He can live off rocks and dirt for the rest of his life and he'd be fine. All right, but anyway, so what are we doing for this, this, this fourth one? We need a name for this. What would be. What would be. What would be moist. Oh, moist. Moist, the moist just to try and trigger the people that hate that word. Is that a word well, people hate? Oh, that's super hated. Yeah. yeah. Moist? Why? I don't know why, but some it, people just hate it. It's in the top ten. Look, look, look. Remember my cheat sheet for, for things Thad- Thaddeus says that annoys people? Uh-huh. Look at there. Very top word on the very top. <laughs> <laughs> moist panties. Moist. moist panties. Those are those are two of the most reviled words. Um, by, Is that why by, they're on there? 
Oh yeah. I thought yeah. that was just a, a much keener view into Thaddeus's mind right there. <laughs> buy, buy Martin's moist panties. Oh wait. <laughs> he screams that. That's what he screams in the bedroom, not at war. At war, he uses different right. ones. Right. Right. So the drippy cult. Um. No. Well, I, I, I thought I thought moist was kind of like dirt in that it uh, diminutizes, diminishes their their importance. They they aren't they aren't the water cult. They're the damp cult. Damp the damp the damp cult. cult like that. I like that. Damp cult. Sold. All right. Brilliant. Damp we got... cult and the dirt cult. Yeah. We got the damp dirt flappy and barbecue cults. All right, we've we've, like we've regulated them to a much this. more manageable uh, uh, forces. This now. session's already been worthwhile. <laughs> That's right. right. Terminology out. Okay, so if we think they're probably working together, although we're mm -hmm. not quite sure why or how yet, and they're well, probably second, I feel like we might actually be able to f find out if uh, whether or not they are more likely to be working together based on talking to the, the dwarf that's with us. Well, this is part of what is, we're doing, is, is brainstorming by, by right. figuring out the kind of structure that we expect there that can right. help inform the questions right. that we want to have asked the dwarf. Right. Basically just, hey, is, was it just one cult or yep. was it clearly... Who was or, there? Or, how many groups? By. When they split right. the people up, how many different ways did they go? What types of creatures were involved? So we can get a sense, you know, are these earth or water or line creatures, that type right. of thing. Um, we could even ask more specific. I mean, we've now found a spire, which I expect is probably related to the Flappy Cult. We've got this mm -hmm. underground layer in the monastery related to the Dirt Cult. And I don't know where the fire guys are going to hang out. We could ask if there's like a giant like party bonfire anywhere. Like a, I don't know. <laughs> but we, we, could ask, we haven't asked about this river yet. There's a river running down through the center of this, and we haven't encountered the friggin' right. water group yet. Is there anything of note maybe about this river we should be asking? So I think that might be ask, worth asking. Um, does it change our plans at all, like the way we approach this, if we assume there are four somewhat related cults working together? I think it means that the next time we go to the river, we should be prepared to be attacked, basically. So we should just distrust water for a while. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that yeah. sounds Or kind maybe of the silly, next time it rains, but... we should be worried. You know, oh, you no. say that in jest. I'm not. Uh, I wasn't saying that in jest. That was totally. I know it's sometimes hard to tell, but that was that one was serious. Like that, there <laughs> might there might actually be. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised. We've crossed over a couple of bridges now, right? We traveled the length of one of the rivers. We've crossed the river twice or three times on a bridge. Maybe it's not as simple as that. Perhaps there's something deeper in there. I mean, because there can be other nature-aligned aspects, right? Besides just water as a fourth. I mean, do we know other names? Like no, it's it's definitely it's definitely gonna be water. But maybe there's like a lake in the hills somewhere, like a mountain lake type thing. So that's well, probably and, worth asking about. And it's know. probably just not their turn. Not that they haven't had opportunity. It's just not their turn. Right, you um, think they have like a schedule, like Thursdays the the flappy the, flappies harass the heroes. Fridays it's right. you know the barbecues the, turn, and they right. have like the, the water cold had this whole weekend scheduled off. Right. Right. So they're but, not back on. Okay, that can make sense. Yeah. So what can we do to prepare? So it sounds like Absorb Elements might be a, a good one, this campaign, um, Steve. <laughs> yeah. but what, what else can we do with the information if we... If and we... you guys learned that one too? It's a no. really good spell. No? I, I, I have protection from fire, but it's a concentration spell and it only works on one person. Yeah, the Absorb so Element it's... as a reaction is fucking amazing. Right. I, I might be able to do that as a Warlock. I think not. I, I gotta look it up again. It's in... Um, I can't do it now. It'll be in Xanathar, so you'll be able to tell who has it. But I don't think I can. I have a, uh, a stop, drop, and roll spell that I started to cast at the end of that last session, but um, You got the dropping part down, but forgot the rolling. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. The unconsciousness part got in the way. Yep. But I, no, but seriously, does it impact, I mean, besides clearly preparing for elemental style damages and whatnot, does it, does it impact our preparation at all? Like, would we approach this differently with, with assuming they're all related now, now that we have the information? Do we have magic weapons? I do. Does Thaddeus have a weapon that will deal damage to like a water elemental? That's right. It might be worth preparing. If we have spells that make our weapons magical, for those of you who don't already have that, that might be worth having if we're fighting elementals. Mm. Like just the spell magic weapon, for example? Yep. Yep, I could, um, I could swap that out for something next long rest. Sounds like uh, 
bless is going to be useful because if we're going to have elemental magic thrown at us, elemental magics are notoriously blasty, right? We're getting ice storms and fireballs and this type of shit thrown at us. So resistances would be good, like uh, like saving throw resistances. Um, so that. No, you don't think so, Steve or uh, yeah. Zyla? Why is that? Not particularly. Okay. I mean, all right. So I just put a star beside it. Do I take the star off of it or not? You two sort that out and let me know. <laughs> Make that star a little. Put that star in pencil. <laughs> um, but I was, I mean, what, what else can we do for that? Like, so maybe, what... maybe I, like, so we haven't really talked about the whole. Hey, if we we go to a town looking for magical items in general, what sort of stuff is available? And so maybe like if we happen to run across like some kind of potion that's like resistance against X Y Z, then now we know that hey, that could be particularly useful. Sure. Whereas before we would just like wave it off like, oh no, I don't want that crap. Maybe sure. something like that, but um, it it increases my concern that we should have made it past Summit Hall, which is where the delegation was headed, and they might have an awful lot of information about why the delegation was headed there and what they were up to, because nobody on the route has any any clue mm -hmm. about that. Um, and it well, could be even, it? no, we, we never, never went, went to Summit Hall. Yeah. We, we stopped um, where the delegation got attacked like a day out and then refused and then did, like, to cross. like that in and out thing as opposed feels to. feels very out of character to actually go ask people things, though. Yeah. Um, char charging ahead <laughs> without without information is, is much more. Or rescuing uh, the no, delegation. These, this would be like we camp. I mean, every time we have a long rest, we have eight hours we spend with each other. You don't yeah, think we'd right. have this is our long rest right now. That's right. We're but at our long, long rest, rest. Like, <laughs> but at our long rest, Tim is like playing the tambourine and singing about girls. Like, he doesn't have this conversation. All right. Well, the brains him. of the party, which should be Tim with his int score, will do the talking. Tim can do his playing, but I think this would still. Who be says that that's not the smart thing to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> you got some sort of apocalyptic thing. You're just chilling out. You're playing the tambourine. What's wrong with that? I don't know that a flappy flappy is like the tambourine. You might be. You, you might be. Yeah. No. Okay. So I don't know that I don't know that it does inform anything except the fact that we should probably expect that any time we're anywhere in the Summer Hills, we're getting attacked by something, mm -hmm. and we should probably assume that, you know, reinforcements yeah, aren't far off from anywhere else. I think so going and chatting with people if this escalates. I mean, honestly, that hellhound attack might be enough of an escalation that we start thinking. It might depend on Thaddeus and uh, Chackle, because they were the closest to death, but they might think, you know, maybe going and finding out what's going on is better than running into the hills right now. Well, I think some of it we can do, when we, when we, ret when we yeah. retcon talking to uh, the delegate uh, delegation guy, I think that might answer a lot of that. And we might, mm -hmm. we might end up swinging back through town for like some healing potions or something, but we might not have to. I mean, we're only a couple hours outside of town. It's not like we are in the middle of the, the hills with no way to get back easily. We're not that far outside of town. So we do yeah, have that option. Right. Um, but before we actually do the the uh, retcon with the dwarf conversation, Adam, you've got any input on, on all the conversation so far? Is there any, any piece of that that you had commentary about? Oh, I can't. I can't really chime in on that because you guys are like hypothesizing about the whole plot of the campaign. So right. I was, I was expecting you to accidentally say something and not be so careful. All right. Well, well done. Well done. I can answer your questions if you want me to, but that's going to ruin your story, guys. Right. No, no, that's fine. No, what I'm doing is I'm reading about the things that you're hypothesizing about so that I know which is right. So as yeah, you're coming yeah. up with these new ideas, I'm like, oh, I don't know that. Let's go find out what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> because at some point, you're probably going to stumble into something or you're going to talk to someone and I'm going to like, I've still not read all of this document. It's so long. It's 260 pages. And yeah, sometimes you guys will be talking amongst yourselves and I'll be like, I don't know that piece of information. <laughs> so yeah, well, good. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be told the answers to those, but I think it is no. worth having had that conversation as a group as to what the fuck's going on. Cause I mean, we haven't, we've been busy. We've been like, ever since we found this monastery, it has been nonstop kind of, things happening to us and a moment to reflect is actually kind of useful i mean it's... you guys haven't done this once yet i don't think like you say like where you sit and just discuss what you think is going on and your mm -hmm. idea of the story and it's good because you guys might have been on totally different pages 
and now you know, at least. So. Yeah, I, I think we've spent five minutes off camera as we were like, all right, guys, see you next week. I, I think we've said something along the lines of, so what do you think's going on? And we all say, I don't know, and see you next week. So, right. All right. No, I think, I think we pieced together the whole four elemental thing fairly quickly. Oop, sorry, guys. So I guess then let's uh, let's go, let's have in the past have questioned the dwarf with these wonderful insights, and then let's <laughs> consider if we want to go back to town or not. And then we can see. Are we, I don't know. We, are we still doing the Jirth Memorial Barbecue, or is that not in good <laughs> too too soon? <laughs> Apparently the food isn't suitable. That's what I've been told. <laughs> his oh, other ogre, his ogre family is not going to come to be served this swill. They need something a little. Little higher, higher brow. Oh man, his family is showing up. That'll be interesting. <laughs> Jirth has a younger sister who's very infatuated with Tim. Post this, you know, like saying there's all sorts of there's all sorts of possibilities here. So, all right, so let's let's go let's let's time travel and have question this uh, the dwarf delegate a little bit differently. So, do we want to do that? I, I suppose we do. We want to do that in character. Or do we want to? How do we want to do this, Adam? We'll do it in character. I imagine Thaddeus. Worst would... case ever. Worst case ever. I imagine Thaddeus should talk to the, yeah, the me dwarf. Too. I think the 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 goblin and the goblin and the drow looking character, both I... probably gonna traumatize a just recently freed prisoner. So I might I might be a little quiet on this one too. So we can I can prompt you with ideas or questions if you want. I don't mind. It's not like I want you to be on your own for that. It's just I think <laughs> the actual conversation wouldn't make a lot of sense to do it that way. So. There's, there's many days of traveling, so there could be, like, day one, I talked about this and this and this, and then I talked to the party afterwards, and then day two, I talked about this and this and this kind of a thing. Yeah, and we and had... I'm, uh, I'm learning the invisibility spell while this goes on, so Tim will just, like, sort of appear behind you. As... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're stubborn but, like, now parts of you. Like, you thought you had to be nude the first time yeah. you did it, but you didn't really <laughs> cast the spell right. The second time, it's, like, just your arm right that's showing. Arm yeah, from the elbow to the to the fingertips. Yep. No. It's, it's not how spells work. <laughs> I, I have to learn invisibility. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I guess you can get it wrong, right? Yeah. So, that's great. So we asked, we wanted to ask about uh, the river, about lakes, about the actual fight that he was uh, abducted in, about the number of individuals, the types of creatures, uh, the splitting of a delegation, if it was split into four parts, if he saw that, or three or two or one. Um, what else? Mo most important, no, is the purpose of the delegation. Why, of the, why yeah. were you yes. guys... I'm, that's I think that's where I start, and then I quiz for details regarding. Sure, but I'm trying uh, to I'm trying to jog your memory before you start, so you have or if or give you a list even of things that would be worth ta covering for topics. Uh, okay. And, and then things about this hero that is being laid to rest. You know, yep. anything. A the circumstance of his demise. B anything about him item wise, like if he if he had powerful magic armors or swords or this type of thing. If any of his gear is missing or was stolen or what anything like this all this could be very useful to figure out what the hell's going on and why so i guess we're right, gonna well, put this on thaddeus's on, shoulders huh st stay on top of whispering that into my ear because that's a hell of a list right yeah yeah um i don't have roll 20 and i can't change the way my skype overlay looks without screwing up um the recording so um whispering is going to be probably just literally me saying it yeah 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 no i didn't mean <laughs> yep <Go. laughs> <laughs> text me text me on my cell phone there you go. Just <laughs> that be... i just turned off so it would quit doing that yeah. all right I mean, um, if you don't i mean i can just give you that information if you want to do it that way but if you want to do it in character as well that's fine i think I in mind. character here would be better you know <laughs> this is this is the, this is the point where you guys that way, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> like at which point is this where you're traveling this would be when we were traveling back um, from the monastery to the town, uh, when we right. had about three or four days or four or five okay. days or whatever I, it was. Yeah, I think that was five days of nothing to do but like ride a horse or walk beside this guy and, and oh, yeah. uh, loose, loosen his lips a little and hand him an ale and um, find out what's going on sitting around a campfire. So Right. There were many, many long rests like, surrounded by peasants and stuff that we had just saved. So. Sure. All right, then. So, friend... How do you say that name? 
Brolden. Broldenthar. Yeah. So friend Brol. God, for fuck. What is his nickname? Buddy bro. <laughs> Fellow <laughs> dwarf. <laughs> My friendly. You can call me Davin. Davin. <laughs> no, I met your brother. <laughs> Savin, Gavin, and Ravin, and Snavin. Yeah, you can just call him whatever you like. Um. So, my moist little friend. <laughs> my yeasty lava. <laughs> not, not lover. Not lover. I heard larva. larva. Uh -huh. Oh, good. I don't want to slur. Um, I'm interested in knowing, given our current involvement and embroilment in this terrible fiasco, the purpose of the delegation and the the reason you traveled and the reason you were attacked what what can you tell me to help me understand better what's going on and how i can continue to serve moradin and the rescue of the delegation we were a large caravan traveling from mirabar to waterdeep uh officially it was to be a show of strength for the lord's alliance one one second from mirabar to waterdeep yeah you you were headed to Summit Hall with a body. That's right. That was on the way. But the main purpose was to get to Waterdeep. Ah, okay. Please continue. We were a, a, a show of strength for the Lord's Alliance, but also a diplomatic envoy. We were to attempt to try and bring more cities into the fold of the Alliance and maybe reach out to the current members there. So you were headed to Waterdeep as a Sorry. So this was a political delegation headed to Waterdeep. Absolutely. And who were the political figures? Who was in charge? Who was authorized to negotiate? So there was four of, well, there was myself. I'm, I was transporting my collection of manuscripts for the histories in Waterdeep. Teresiel was a moon elf from Silvery Moon speaking on behalf of the elves. Rundorth was a fellow shield dwarf from Mirabar, representing us. And a noble herself, Desenia, from Waterdeep, who's been part of our delegation for a long time, was returning home. And you were, you were um, carrying manuscripts? That's right. And I'm a sage. I keep histories and keep tabs, and sometimes we transport and make copies between the major cities. So that was part of my my role in the delegation was to bring stuff back to Waterdeep. So the knight being transported to Summit Hall. What what role does that have in the delegation? Just a piece of cargo. It's just it's a. Uh... It's ceremonious to be returned, and it's just to honor the dead and bring him back to his order. Who was this knight? I don't know the details. Rund Rundorth was handling that. All I know was... is it was precious cargo, and it was taken from us. The knight was precious cargo? Not just some random fallen hero? No, he was in a special coffin and everything. And who was the one in charge of this? Rundorth? That's right. The dwarf. No, the dwarf. And what was to happen at Summit Hall when you arrived? I presume Rundorth would meet with uh, some contact, return the body. We might go through a ceremony if we had the time before we continued on. Who would want this delegation destroyed? Enemies of the Alliance, I suppose. This is the Alliance from the Deserin Valley? Elves, dwarves, humans? Is that the Alliance? I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the local politics. Oh, if only you could roll history. <laughs> yeah. Well, we yeah, I was going to say, I but feel it's like fine. something that a lot as, of people would know. As it turns out, I, Alliance, I rolled a 15. <laughs> so the Lord's Alliance, that this is what everybody would know, right. is a coalition of rulers from cities and towns all across Faerun, which is the place you're in, primarily in the north. 
These people collectively agree that solidarity is needed to keep evil at bay. So the rulers of Waterdeep, Silvery Moon, Neverwinter, other free cities dominate the Alliance. Every lord in the Alliance works for the fate and fortune of his own settlement, etc. Uh, their beliefs, if civilization is to survive, all must unite against the dark forces that threaten it. Glory comes from protecting one's home and honoring its leaders. And the best defense is a strong offense. So these noble and wise alliance leaders are strengthening their coalition and hoping to bring more civilization to this rustic population? Absolutely. The more people we can get in the alliance, the more we have to fight off evil. And can you tell me anything about these manuscripts you were carrying? What's the likelihood that those were of value to the attackers? They're valuable to us as a history and to keep note of what's going on. And these are important copies being returned to Waterdeep. I don't know. I don't know, lads. Someone may have hired someone for that particular item. It could be important to someone with the knowledge to use it, but... Uh, and you said you're a sage, yes? That's right, lad. So, we need your professional consultation then, sage. There are elemental forces at work in this area. Perhaps in alliance, perhaps in competition. And we need to understand better those forces, what they're up to and why in regards to both the attack on the delegation and perhaps the bigger threat to the Alliance as a whole. Are there things you know as a sage, things that might be in the manuscripts regarding elemental forces that need to be understood better? What what do you know, sage, that might, might help us win the day? Well, the Sumber Hills have been a place of mystery, ruin, speculation from all the local towns. And it's got worse recently. It seems like some evil power is definitely at work. Things are happening in farmlands that shouldn't be when the weather is supposed to be hot. It's cold. It's cold when it's supposed to be hot. It's, you know, it's raining when it's supposed to be summer. There's strange lights and sounds that people report from the hills. But my knowledge of elements in the plains, it's not much. I can't really help you there. There are dangerous, I know that, and if there are powerful magics or magicians at work, they might be trying to contact these planes and these elements, and that could definitely explain what's happening around us. Well, perhaps you know what happened to you in person since you were there. During the attack, how many elemental forces would you estimate were present? We saw clear evidence of earth magic. That's what we saw. You only saw earth magic. We were attacked by earth, the, uh, these earth monks, and they all use powerful magics against us. Um, and, and then once... later, later on, that group of ambushers was then ambushed by people flying on vultures, but there was no use of magic or elements in that battle. Wait, the ambushes were ambushed? Yeah. So, yep. after you crossed the river, I assume, you were ambushed on the east shore of the river? That's right. And... The west shore. Why yes. were they on the shore of the river? The west, west shore. shore. They, um, they, they, just, they, they just crossed. And then they, they had just the done shore. the ferry crossing. And then they were ambushed by Flappy. Flappy ambushed them. Where we saw the, the fork in the paths... That was probably where the Flappy Colt attacked the Dirt Colt. They flew in, they took the Senor away, and they left after attacking. Why were why was the delegation ever off the path though? Did we talk about that and I missed it? No, that's a good question. That's what I was trying to say. Like they walked off the path toward the river to get ambushed. Oh and right. Left. That's a good point. The so initial cool. ambush, the the initial ambush spot was way off the was way off yeah. the path. Why yeah, was it off half, the path? Half mile off the path. Right. Sage, 
Why, why is that? Why, why did the delegation leave the road to Summit Hill and head toward the river prior to the ambush? Well, we'd made camp for the night. So you were camping a half mile off the road for safety's sake, and that's where the... Well, we, we, uh, we were near the river. A few of the lads were going to get some fish, and we found it was a nice place to set up. Little did we know it was our funeral. So um, you've mentioned that Desenia was taken by the Flappy cult, and you yourself were taken, taken by the Dirt cult. Um, you said that there were likely two other delegation members that survived, and yet you've not mentioned their whereabouts they, or... They put me to work in the in the monastery mining, and I know that they took Rundorth and Terraseal. They talked about somewhere below, and I never saw them again. So they accompanied you to the monastery and then were taken away. That's right. That is important for us to know. Mm, disturbing. So, it did. Shh, quiet, you. <laughs> and so, we saw the path that headed up to the monastery was a smaller group of people and presumably included you. The other fork did not go up to the monastery. It went elsewhere. But that would not have been bird-riding creatures because they left on foot. Where did that larger group of creatures go? I don't did know they, that. Did they fork off before the Flappy cult attacked or after? I don't know that. Uh... I'm pretty sure the group divided beforehand. And so then we got attacked closer to the monastery. Ah, I see. So the what what group went uh, more more westerly instead of to the monastery? What what composed comprised of that group? Uh, there were some of those what they call them boat bears. A large group of them. Right. If I may interject, uh, I, I almost feel like there's like a bunch of bugbears that's kind of working for all th all of the organizations. So, like, even if the Flappy attacks, that doesn't like the the Flappy could have a bunch of bugbears working for them, and so like the Flappies could have taken Desenia and just traveled with Desenia on foot back to the Spire. They flew away. Okay. The flappies and the dirt the, grubs? They just attacked a pillow on a jelly on the vulture and flew off. Mm, okay. I wonder if we'll meet any breeze elementals. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. All right. So, all right. um, you scan, only... scan, scan your list, filthy. What did yeah. we miss? Uh, questions about the river itself or and or lakes. So basically, knowledge of the area. Any uh, particular landmarks uh, that we should be aware of that he might be aware of? Answer might just be a no. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's more of an ask town folk, not him necessarily. Well, I think that's a ask Tim question because Tim never forgets <laughs> any place he's ever been and is an outdoorsman. Okay, this is my first time in the Desert Valley, though. Uh, my new hunting ground. Make a roll, Tim. All right, what else? Uh, I think we covered a lot of what we wanted covered there. Um, uh, did, oh, more uh, about the knight who died. We haven't yeah, heard anything about exactly. Yeah. You know. Did uh, did this knight have uh, items or or a, a history that might be valuable or important in shifting a balance of power in this region? Um, and uh, what, what happened to he... his body? Was that taken? Did yes, and and did did they bring him across the river and up to the monastery? Where where did he end up in, in all of this confusion? I don't know. That Rundos handled all of that. If if he had any nice items with him, he would know. All I know is they they attacked us and they took him away, and it, it wasn't my jurisdiction. I didn't handle that. Who took him away? Uh, I mean, 
Did he cross the river with you? I wasn't conscious. When you woke up, when I came to, he was, anything... he was gone. I don't know. When Sorry. you came to, was there a giant coffin that was still being transported <laughs> with you? No, or not? exactly. Okay. Clearly, this fucking week was hell for that poor dwarf. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's yeah. just like recovered from this, like wandering down. He's just getting drilled. <laughs> right. Yeah, this isn't great. He's <laughs> first. I'm beat to hell. Then I'm put to work in a mine, and then you assholes have to quiz <laughs> me, right? Yeah. I think because this is happening over a period of days, right? So right, right. You right, maybe right. do one question a night or whatever. Right, or like over, you know, we wander over for a question or two, wander about as we're walking, et cetera, sure. come back, yeah. Right. Wouldn't it be quite as intense as this? This is, this is the third degree by Thaddeus, which is, which is fun. Right. Uh, Look in my eyes. Tell me what you think, man. And he, had, he um, said he had no knowledge of who this knight was in life or any of the deeds that he might have been famous for. That's right. Okay. Yep. He was a special cargo. Yeah. That was Run being looked after by someone else. Rundorth okay. is in charge of that nonsense. There was going to be a ceremony, maybe, if we had time. Um, well, okay. The basically, knowledge... so, Sorry, go on, Zell. So, so basically, basically, there's this human from Waterdeep that was taken by Flappy. There's another dwarf and a moon, something elf that are deeper in the the place that we are terrified to go down to. And the dwarf that's down there is the one that was completely overseeing this this uh, dwarven hero's body return. Hero might so, be a red herring now, though, because we've now found the delegation's actual purpose was not anything to do with this hero. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. But I although, mean, did although we find they... the corpse? Did we find the knight's corpse at the delegation's place? Because it seems nope. weird to me that no, the cult not. would carry away a entombed or a a. Uh, you know, a sealed casket, unless there's some reason to. They yeah, took exactly. everything. Yeah. They, well, they didn't take everything. They left all even, the carts and all the... All but this. the carts were empty. Pretty sure. Well, yeah, they were just totally smashed back. to pieces and they took everything. What else were yeah. they carrying besides books and uh, this corpse? Was it just supplies? Two seconds. I assume it was mostly just supplies. So, there was four wagons carrying supplies, gold and various other items, 20 guards, eight of which were mounted. Several craftsmen, artisans, and workers were there hoping to sell some of their wares along the way. Okay. So, it really does so sound somebody's like... Etsy store was in the wagon and they decided to take it off. Yep. So, um, how much... I'm not telling you that, that this... Also, also, I'm not telling you this is the answer, but consider that they could have just dumped the body like in the river, they could have buried it somewhere, they could have just got rid of it. It's true. All, all he's all he's telling you is that it was gone. It's kind of weird though that they would no. they would slaughter and leave all the bodies of all the people they just killed there, not bury them at all, bury their own dead, and then they're gonna spend some extra time to carry the body off somewhere else and bury it. That seems like a very strange use of resources. No, I think there's something special about it. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I mean, um, I guess theoretically you could say that they took the casket because. But these are fucking... They saw that it was being guarded, and then, like, when they were crossing the river, they were like, hey, what's in this thing, by the way? And then they opened it up, and they're like, oh, there's nothing in here that we care about. I'm just tossing the river, and that's that. So, like, theoretically, it could just be nothing at all. But I feel like it is think probably dwarven something. dwarven caskets float? <laughs> um, probably not. Yeah, not right. really much more stone. Right. Metal. Might just... Although he wasn't dwarven, was he? He, he was human? The knight? I assume it was a dwarven... Was he a dwarven knight? Do we know? Uh, I'm not sure. How a, tall was a the coffin? A knight short table. <laughs> How tall was the coffin? He might have been human. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, does uh, do we have other questions for um, this dwarven delegate? I don't so, think so. One of the one of the weird things is if they just needed his soupy doopy amulet of elemental stopping or something they would have just cracked open the coffin stole that and walked away maybe um, if they know what it was but perhaps they don't understand exactly what it is they've been sent to do it or perhaps that is some uh perversion of you know the, the holy knight in death with can be with whatever powers applied can be converted into some unholy abomination style thing where the corpse is relevant like that that's what i was wondering is if 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 the whole parcel was 
necessary, they would have carried the whole parcel. If some piece was necessary, they probably would have been more efficient about it. And we don't know. I mean, perhaps his coffin was like warded or ruined in some way that they isn't just a simple they can pop it open, that there has to be some sort of counter magic applied to open that up. So I guess right. there's a lot Which of... Which is why you'd, why you'd need Rundorth and the coffin, perhaps. Yeah, possibly. And But Rundorf is now in the in the the pit, right? Like the pit and pit. and so so could the the casket be? Yeah, although not not necessarily because we don't know. Casket could have also been taken by the Flappy Flappies. Yep. Um, although that's that's pretty tricky flapping away with it. I did have that thought. It's part of the yeah part of the question about what you think it's made of. I mean, we don't know how strong these vultures are. So. Um. And it's interesting that the Flappy Cult didn't much care about, as far as we can tell, anything else. He saw them bomb out of the sky, take the noble, and leave. Yeah. Um, they could they, have just taken anything that they could have gotten their hands on, kind of a thing. So, and and that randomly, might be a thing. That randomly might took be. the most important member of the delegation? Maybe. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's tough to say. Must have some information. All right, but are we done with grilling? Uh, delegate? I like the idea of... I, th I think we're done with the delegate, but I like the idea of also asking townsfolk if there's... As silly as it sounds, if there's some significant body of water around here. Okay. All right. Well, let's cut the part here, then. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Looks like World 20 is still not cooperating. So um, we'll decide amongst ourselves if we'll do another session like this or if perhaps we may reschedule. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. See you soon.